Hey, good morning, guys. It's me. It's Monday morning, and it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful morning. Um, and I wanted to jump on here and talk about, you know, ways to cope with stress and depression, um, you know, especially these days, especially with everything that's going on. You know, I'm, I want to help uh, inoculate or insulate us from uh, some of the more dangerous feelings that are out there, like like depression. Um, you know, I think I've been talking about anxiety and fear and panic, but you know, I don't want to I don't want to not talk about you know um, the uh, issue with uh, and I don't even want to call it severe sadness. Um, depression is the best word to describe it um, because it depresses everything. You know, my energy, my motivation, my joy my my hope it depresses everything and eventually if it continues you know for those of us who had had this this emotional um disorder for some time it will it will pretty much eliminate all thoughts of hope joy and escape, you know, just to get out of it. Now, now, mind you, a lot of my people who struggle with addictions will go into using to cope and to alleviate themselves from the severe grief that they'll be they'll be dealing with. And and I'm not talking grief in the traditional terms of somebody died. I'm talking the grief over our own life, you know, to where we were so <clears throat> upset that uh, with with the things that have been happening over a series of events to where my perception has shifted to only see the negative. So like on a beautiful, beautiful day like today, like, oh, let me turn on my, on my sunroof. <laughs> on a beautiful day like today, we only see darkness. In fact, we don't even go outside to see the sunshine because we're so... We're so full of gloom and doom on the inside that it's almost like we, it won't penetrate what we've got going on. We've got a shield of darkness around us. <clears throat> so, you know, what do, what do you do? And, you know, it's funny because I had a friend ask me if I've ever felt like that. And uh, to where, um, you know, I was so down that I just wanted to end it all, which is the end of the story for depression. You know, when depression continues and and lasts for a significant amount of time the end goal of it is to end our life you know um you know I, and it's very hmm, it's very painful it's it's so painful that sometimes people can only think of that ultimate escape you know um which is which is very upsetting for me because I have become that never give up guy. You know, that's everything that, that that's why I call my, uh, my YouTube channel Savage Sobriety because I will fight for that better life until my last breath. And I fight for that for you guys because in my mind, I, I totally believe, <clears throat> which comes from my faith. That if we don't stop trying, we will eventually get to where we want to be. But we have to fight the urge to quit, to give up, to to just to just let the game be over, you know. And a lot of us that quit before we even got up to bat. And okay, if we strike out, so what? We get up and try again. <clears throat> so here's some some little little uh tidbits on dealing with depression, especially during these times, um, which, which is very similar to how we deal with, with anxiety. You know, uh, it, it's a really a, a lot of self-care. And, and the problem with depression, which, which to me makes it worse than anxiety, is that I don't want to take care of myself. You know, I've become so consumed with self-loathing that I have, I've become worthless in my own eyes, in my own perceptions. You know, everybody else is more important than me. And, and so I've stopped any thoughts of 
managing my own stress and my own issues, my own health. You know, and so often when I when I'm talking to somebody in my office or on the phone or whatever, I, I always talk about when's the last time you ate something? You know, uh, when's the last time you drank any water? When's the last time you went for a walk in the sunlight? When's the last time you talked to a loved one? When's the last time you got a hug from grandma? When's the when's the last time you did something positive? And often it's it, you know it's it's in the negative for all those 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 questions. You know, um, it's no, 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 I haven't done that. I haven't done that. I haven't done this. Um, I mean, and, and a lot of my people who struggle with depression, the people around them don't realize it because I used to function very well at taking care of everybody else, you know, um, and I still do that now. I still take care of a lot of other people in my life, but one of the people I take care of my life that is a priority is myself. You know, because I know that if I don't take care of myself, I can't effectively take care of other people. I can't even be an example of being healthy to take care of other people because I'm not doing it myself. I'm faking it. You know, so I'm, you know, so, so when you, you know, when I was younger, I did that quite, that's how I ended up in my addiction, you know, because I was always running on fumes, faking it, giving, 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 giving. And not ever receiving and, re, and refueling my own tank. And so in the end, I started making huge mistakes, um, huge miscalculations with my life. Um, that's how I ended up getting fired from my, from my one job that I loved. I loved working for uh, Thomas West uh, doing the independent living skills program um, and, and got fired because I, I was just I was snapping. I was losing it. Um, I, I was running on on two, three hours sleep. Um, and that's when I started getting involved with, you know, drinking and taking sleeping pills because I was just consumed with just starting over. I wanted to go to sleep at like, I mean, it was like five o'clock and I'd want to go to sleep. I'd want to sleep all day Saturday. I was shutting my blinds and my windows. I didn't want people to come disturb me. I was completely isolating. And um, it was easy for me at that time because I didn't have a family. And so that that was the huge struggle. And I was not taking care of myself. I was eating cold pizza and drinking. Um, what was I drinking? <clears throat> Other than alcohol. I think it was Mountain Dew. Um, anything that had a lot of sugar. And this is before I even knew um, I was diabetic. And I don't even think I was diabetic at the time. I think I created my own diabetes through my lack of taking care of myself. I was totally unhealthy and stressed the hell out. I mean, I was I, it, I was nuts. I was a nut job. Um, but I was still funny. I was still running around, telling jokes, taking care of people, uh, I, you know, just always wanting to give because I, I was in desperate need of receiving. I wanted the compliments. I wanted people to think I was a good guy, you know, because I was trying to feed that void inside that was so negative and empty. And no one can feel it. No one can feel it because I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it in myself. But I wanted it so badly. So, you know, I would I would absorb and suck up compliments like like I like like a fiend. And 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 it, and it was never enough. And so I would do more and more and more and more. And it still wasn't enough. And 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 none of the material things would fill that void. Nothing filled that void. Until I until I uh, went back to church. You know, and I, and I know some of you guys, you know, are, are atheists or whatever, you know, have a hard time hearing that. And I'm, and, I, and, and, I, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not sorry for my faith, but I'm sorry that that is, you know, what I, I had come to the answer for, you know, that, you know, and, and, and it's funny because a lot of people tell me, well, you know, I've tried church. I said, look, I tried church, too. I didn't like my mom's church. I grew up in church. And if I, and I'm no offense to mom, but if I would have stayed at my mom's church, I would have never discovered a real deep relationship with, you know, Jehovah, uh, that I have right now, you know, with real people, you know, um, just really getting to have the nitty gritty of my faith, you know, um, where I could be real, you know, um, you know, my, my, uh, my first church, um, I couldn't be real. And that added to my depression and, and my, my stress and anxiety because I was faking it. That's, you know, that's part of where I learned how to fake it. 
you know, and, I, and, 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 and that was that was how it was with me in my church. I mean, I mind you, there are other people at my mom's church that do very well. It, that wasn't me. I struggled, you know, because I'm I was a different kind of Christian, you know, whatever. Um, I, I needed some place where I could get get dirty, get dirty with my faith. And so that's what led me to really dealing with my depression and my own self-worth. And it just put me on a path of finding good people to where I could learn from, learn how to love myself, you know. And from that spun out into uh, me learning how to be healthy and learning how to find healthy friends and learning how to manage myself before I could manage other people, you know. And without that, I wouldn't be the phenomenal counselor I am today. (laughs) Um, And so, you know, just in dealing with the deadly disease of depression, you know, um, because to me, you know, it's those core issues that lead us into all these other problems, like with addictions and, and, uh, you know, financial problems, whatever, just, you know, there, there are some core issues that we need to deal with and, Today, I'm talking about depression. Um, I'm talking about depression, you know. Um, and, 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 and the key to uh, putting an end to that dysfunction is learning to do the opposite of what we've been doing. And mind you, we have to understand that this will be a gradual process of reinventing ourselves, re-educating ourselves, reprogramming that mind that has been tuned in to darkness because it's going to come down to the love. It's going to come down to rebuilding that ability to love ourselves. you know, just like God loves me, you know, but you know, I, I can't, you know, when, when I'm, de- when I was depressed, I couldn't, I couldn't hear that because I couldn't. And that was the problem I had with relationships is that I could get with you. Be- I mean, I dated beautiful women. But in my mind, I never thought it would last because on the surface, I said it was because I was fat. But on the, when I got down deeper, it's because I thought I was unlovable. You know, um, when it came down to any long term relationship, I didn't think it would it would it would happen because once they got to know me, they wouldn't they wouldn't love me. They wouldn't want me because in reality, I didn't love myself. So so there is no way I could believe that another person could really love me and, and want to be with me for the long haul, you know? And there's still remnants of that in me, you know? Because when I turn around and I look at my wife, who's still there, you know, she's she a little crazy too, but she's still there. And, and I'm like, she's still here, man. She still loves you, even though we're, 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 uh, we're, we're, we're getting on each other's nerves right now. <laughs> I know she's not going anywhere, you know, and and that thought still kind of tickles me because I know there's still remnants of the old me that doesn't believe someone could love me that deeply and that and that consistently. You know, and it's funny because now now that I, I've learned how to love myself, I can see that love in other people. And how they really love me. And not, not just my wife, but my friends. They really love me. And they've got my back. But 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 that but the old me that, that's still still there, it's not it's not as strong as it was, will look at people who don't who aren't there for me. Who who I'm not that close to. And and it and it will it will magnify the negatives of other people who have, uh, who still, you know, I've, I've still got people in my, in my circle that have used me, that, that, um, take me for granted, you know, whatever. Um, but that's not the majority. And it is disappointing when, when somebody that I would think that was a friend, uh, turns out to be not that good of a friend, you know, that, that does hurt, but that's not, that's not the majority in my life. You know, and if it is the majority in your life, okay, then we need to get out and make some new friends. Find some new people in your life. 
because it is out there. There are people out there that will love you, but you're never going to find them if you don't love yourself. You're never going to beat this deadly, destructive disease of depression if you don't relearn how to truly love yourself. It's not about the medication. It's not about the cognitive behavioral therapy. I, I get all that. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not dogging it. But it's ultimately still going to come down to your capacity and your ability to value yourself. And that's gonna be a hard road for some of us. So, you, you know, geez, this is why I pray for you guys. This is why I pray for my, I ask you guys to pray for me. Because it is, some, of these, some of these problems that we have are homegrown, generational. You know, I'm not saying it, it was uh, genetic. I am saying that it is generational, though. Where all we've seen is low self-esteem, low self-worth, codependency, dysfunction. It is no wonder we've not learned the best ways to love myself, to have the best life I could have. So here we are with me right now. I'm encouraging you to take a new education, to, to learn something new and keep learning it until it until it takes. You are important. And I tell it to all my people, you are important. And, I, and I'm not lying, but you gotta believe you're important, okay? So I love you guys very, very, very much, okay? And you guys are my prayer. Um, I know we got some scary times right now, but now is not the time to quit. It's not, it's not. Now the time's to fight. It's the time to fight. It's time to uh, hold your ground and courageously learn how to be better, okay? So I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.